The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man is nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered, Let the dead bury their dead. But you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, there are many instances where the celebrant, the homilist, is called upon to set aside the readings and to preach a topical homily, some homily that speaks to the issues of the day. Perhaps it is the scourge of pornography, an epidemic in this nation. Perhaps it is the rights of the unborn. Perhaps it is the humanity of the immigrant, legal and otherwise. But tonight, in light of recent events, I'd like to preach about another topic, driving. The morality of driving. We don't oftentimes think about driving as a moral act, but it is. And I was reminded of this recently as I was examining my conscience, going through the usual list of stuff. And something popped in my mind. I'm pretty sure it was my guardian angel. I think you were texting recently on the road. Now, my brothers and sisters, I'm not proud of that. It happens. And frankly, I think it's sinful. And at times, depending upon the speed one is traveling, one's distractions, it can be gravely sinful. My brothers and sisters, how we drive matters, and it should be affected by our following Jesus. Let's let that sink in for a little bit. How we drive should be affected by our faith. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, of all of the issues that we struggle with here and now, is this really the most important issue? Well, maybe, maybe not. But it's the area of life where I think oftentimes we most give ourselves a free pass. And how we comport ourselves and speak to ourselves and to whoever else is listening, whatever gestures are made by our hands, this does matter. It matters. So I want to offer a few questions that might seem kind of silly, but they're offered in great seriousness as a reminder that driving is a moral act. And believe me, I offer these to myself before I offer them to any of you. Believe me. First of all, am I an occasion of sin for other people by my driving? Now, this can take a variety of forms. Do I drive too slow? You know, that's a problem too. Driving too slow. We have to actually drive the minimum speed limit, and if we're not, we have to put on our blinkers and hut off to the side if we can. We also need to be aware of our speed. Is our speed, again, distracting others, giving them anxiety, possibly causing a, a crash? Heaven forbid. 
Is our method of driving, speed or lack thereof, an occasion of sin for other people? When we change lanes or going to get off the interstate, do we signal? Are we cognizant of other people and their own needs and their own desire to get home safely? Again, do we text and drive? It is, of course, an epidemic as well. Many times we see it on the road, and again, I say with great shame, I myself am guilty, and praise Almighty God, praise Almighty God. No one has been injured because of my selfishness, my carelessness. Am I aware that this is a real danger, that I'm driving a 2,000-pound instrument that could kill someone like that? And I want to ask my brother or sister who won the football game, do I take enough time to get to where I am going, or do I scramble, rushing out the door? We all know there's construction all around us, heaven help us. Do we acknowledge that? Do we give ourselves enough time? I don't. And it's not just because I'm busy, I am. It's also because I'm selfish, and I like what I'm doing right now, and I'm going to leave later. And so when I do leave, I got to scramble, I got to rush, and I've got to be filled with anxiety and frustration at this person driving directly in front of me, who by the way is driving exactly the speed limit, who is driving me up the wall because of my bad planning, my selfishness. What's the old expression? Your lack of planning should not become my problem, okay? Do I pray for my fellow drivers? Do I pray for them? Especially the ones that aggravate us. Do we pray for them? Are the first words out of our lips a cuss word or a curse word? Been there, done that? We as Christians must live by a different way, and that includes praying for those who are bad drivers. If the Lord was here in this present day, maybe that would be added. You must turn the other cheek. You must pray for your enemies and negligent drivers. Uh -huh. Do we pray for them? How easy it is to lambast our fellow human being. Again, I have seen religious sisters curse other drivers. Okay? How quickly and easy it is to get wrapped up in the moment. Do I hold my tongue or my hand, as the case may be? I would say this is especially important if we are driving with impressionable youth. What example are we giving to our kids? Are we giving them anxiety? Are we giving them fear? Are we training them to be rotten, selfish drivers themselves? Finally, I promise you, finally, pray before and after driving. Now, this isn't always possible or practical. Maybe not. Maybe not. But again, we are getting in a mechanism that can cause tremendous damage to property and other people. Maybe it would be wise to say a brief prayer to our guardian angel, please help me. Help me be cognizant of my brothers and sisters. And when we arrive at our destination safely, perhaps we should also pray. I've seen a wonderful, wonderful picture of Jesus on the cross, and it's a rosary over the rearview mirror, and the rosary is flying because the driver's flying fast, and Jesus is holding on to the crucifix, huh? You know? His legs dangling behind him. Do we thank Jesus for his patience with us, for his patience with us, as we are so impatient with others? I know you weren't expecting to come here to get a driving lesson, but how we drive actually matters. And it matters for the Christian in a particular way because it's a manner of loving our neighbor. Do we love our neighbor on the road? Let's all try to do better. And if you see me texting, heaven forbid, honk at me and tell me, Father, put that stupid thing away. I'll thank you later.